You are listening to the Cattle Call Podcast. This is the place where computer-aided design and drafting meets humor and practicality, with a touch of business acumen thrown in for fun. Jim and Rocco, the owners of Zentech Consultants, the premier U.S. technology consulting firm for architecture, engineering, construction, and manufacturing, discuss the fascinating world of CAD with some humor and some honesty. The Cattle Call Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Cattle Call Podcast with Jim and Rocco from Zentech Consultants. I'm your happy, cheery host, Jim, and with me is my partner. It's Rocco. What are you so happy about? Always happy. I'm happy because I made my bed this morning. <laughs> That'll make more sense to the other folks in a little while. Rocco was teasing me be- because he, he kind of knows what I'm talking about today, and, and, and he's just mocking me, people. He's just so rude. He's inconsiderate. That's, Terrible person. You're the happy, happy whatever you said host, and I'm the mean, rude one. There you go. As Rocco, the mean, rude one. That's your new title. Rocco, the mean, rude host. <laughs> I'm going to print it on your my, business cards. Wait my wife listens to this podcast. <laughs> hey, your wife actually listens to the podcast? My wife's like, dude, I hear you talk all day. The last thing I want is to listen to you for another hour. <laughs> oh, goodness. So what are we talking about? Oh, I know we're talking about. I like the topic today. We're talking about, here's our topic for today, folks. I love the title. It's called Working From Home. Don't Screw It Up. <laughs> it's a simple title, right? So um, I, I do. I want to talk about remote work today. Um, and it, and, and it, it is a topic I think that, you know, a lot of us have, have become intimately familiar with over the last two years uh, and, and not necessarily by choice. Um, you know, the, the pandemic forced companies to build remote infrastructure and online meeting capacity into their budgets uh, and release you know, just a huge swath of the workforce to work from home. Um, and let's face it, right, that wasn't management's first choice, right, particularly not middle management. Uh, but the government forced everybody's hand. Now, we're moving back towards a situation where the requirements to work from home are fading. Um, and there is a fast brewing struggle coming between employees and mid-level management uh, about coming back to work in the office. Uh, I, I, I think those managers are particularly keen on the idea because there was a lot of realization in the corporate world that many of those management roles are completely unnecessary without people sitting in the office. Um, and look, I'd personally point out if the, if that's the case, then those managers were never really needed in the first place. But let, let's be that's a personal grudge I hold from years of, you know, struggling with with mid level corporate managers in my own career that made me crazy. Um, but the point though is that now it's becoming pretty apparent to those C suite people, right, that that a lot of their managers have no function without staff physically present and to preserve their jobs those those managers are trying to force things back into that traditional work model now on today's show i do not want to go down the path of that argument Um, but what i do want to do is help give a little bit of ammunition to one side while staying out of the direct line of fire on this Uh, you know think think of rocco and i as the usa and you guys listening are the ukraine we really want to help, but we don't want the flag that will come down on us if we really take a side here. So, Rocco, you, you know, you spent a lot of years in, in that management role, right, before starting up here at Zentech. What what are your thoughts on this, right? I mean, if you were still a manager, right, where we used to work and not an owner, would you, do you think you would view things differently than you do? Um, it, It's hard to say, you know, I, I you know, I personally... I've always kind of struggled with, you know, there's that personal component of, of this all right. And then there's the manager component and then there's the owner component, you know, and I'm one of those people that I like, I I want everybody to like me. I like always been, have been like that. And I don't know if it's because of my disability or, or, or what, you know, and yet you're still the grumpy rude one. How, how, (laughs) how is that? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So I don't know. So it's just me. I bring out the worst in you. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, you know, so I kind of like, I, I, I've always, you know, you struggle between the, the, the level of trust that you need to have with people and being too easy and then being too difficult on too hard on people, you know? Um, so it, it's, it's not, 
it's not a balance. It's not an easy balance, you know, but we're going to get deeper into the discussion here. But the, the, the thing is that you don't need to be too easy of a manager or too difficult of a manager because because of the technology that's out there today. There are ways to track people's performance and what they're doing and and whether they're really being productive. Yeah, that's so. Yeah, and I think that's a great point, right? That you really don't need to change who you are, or how you manage, or how you work. It's it's a slightly different process, but holding people accountable to do their jobs, you know, and 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 giving them the flexibility to do it in a way that works best for them. I I don't think those are mutually exclusive. I think they work well together. Uh, it's a good point. So you know, look, Zentech, right? What was founded as as what Rocco and I call a digital company, right? Um, you know, from its inception, right? We have no central office, and and we likely never will. Um, you know, our employees all work from home, always have, and we were using you know screen shares and desktop conferencing and online meeting for years before words like you know COVID and Zoom and Teams even entered into the English language. Um, you know, in, in my previous work life, personally, I'd, I'd gotten at least high enough up on the food chain in the corporate world so that I was working a hybrid work week long before there was even a name for that. Um, and, and I saw the personal and the social benefits, right, of, of not commuting three or more hours every day, right, and, and the stress reduction and not having to sit and smell, you know, my coworkers microwaving leftover fish for lunch, Right. Or, or having, you know, oh, my God, it was the worst. Uh, or have 30 people ask me, oh, I just have one quick question. But, you know, every hour on the hour, uh, you know, and, and Rocco worked with me directly in those days. Right. And he saw that, you know, the production levels that I achieved from home and, and that it really never impacted the work. So, you know, when we went out on our own, he was at least open right to that idea of a purely digital company. Right. Though, like you were saying earlier, right, the, the idea of unsupervised workers did did make him a little bit nervous at first. Um, and if I remember correctly, right, he was, you, you, you were worried about folks, you know, napping on your dime. Um, so, you know, I mean, has that changed for you, Rocco? I mean, do you, do you still worry that that much? I mean, does it still make you nervous or do, or do you feel better about, you know, our remote work plan here on, on the long term? No, I, I definitely feel better about it. You know, as you see, as I see the way that people work, that, that our employees work and, and they're, the the output that they put out um you know it, it proves look what you know most people are responsible adults right i mean they have jobs they have families they have other responsibilities so you know th there's a level of trust that you need to have and you know are are there are there people that i still worry about sometimes that i second guess sure but you mean besides again, me <laughs> Yeah, besides you, yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, again, the the the, the technology uh, and, and and the results speak for themselves. Yeah, I agree with that. So, yeah, look, I I think that pretty much everybody who got the opportunity to work remotely over the last few years has seen right the personal and the family benefits that it brings, and they aren't really happy with the idea of returning to an office. Um, you know, even the folks who are willing to compromise and, and go to the to a hybrid schedule, right, where they kind of, you know, they work a few days from home and they work a few days in the office. They're doing that as more of a compromise and, and, and not from any real desire to go back and be, you know, part of the team. Right. <laughs> no matter what crap you hear your, your management spouting in that company newsletter, nobody cares about that team. Um, so the question then that I really want to address today is how do you individually keep from being pulled back into that dreaded office environment how do you convince right the the the, the powers that be that you're a more productive uh you know that that you generate more money that you're far more reliable an employee working remotely than you ever could be in that office environment um, and i think you know the, the answer is simple to identify but it is not so easy to implement um, you you simply have to be more and I'm stressing the word more productive at home than you were at the office. And that's it. Right. But but how do you do that, though? Right? How do you make sure that you aren't falling behind expectations? Right. Uh, you know, getting sloppy with your work or, you know, developing a reputation as you know unreliable and lazy and not a, you know, quote unquote, team player when you're sitting at home. Right. Unshaven, unshowered and in your robe and slippers. 
Uh, yeah, and, and the truth is, you can't. Not if you're the person I just described. Uh, you know, the fly in the ointment, I guess, of, of the remote work dream is that you still have to work and, and you still have to do that professionally. You know, the idea of, you know, I'm going to sleep in late, then I'm going to watch a movie and then, yeah, I'll get through my work around 11 o'clock or so and crank it out. It, that is doomed to fail. You know, and, and if you try it, you'll be back in your office chair smelling that, that microwave fish stink, right? The moment that your company can make it happen. Um, and, and I'm not telling you guys this as a business owner or a middle manager. I, I'm, I'm talking to you direct as a guy who had to learn the hard way how to work remotely on my own over a decade ago. All right. So that's what I want to get into today. So let's take a quick break to, to hear from today's sponsor. And, and when we get back, I'm, I want to really talk about the daily how to of successfully working from home. So stand by, folks. We'll be back in just a minute with more of the Cattle Call Podcast. All right, Rocco. So we are sponsoring ourselves yet again today. What is it we want to talk about? We're going to talk about me today, Jim. No, no one wants to talk about you. Not even you. <laughs> oh, fine. Let's talk about Zentech Tech Blocks. Awesome. I like Zentech Tech Blocks. Zentech Tech Blocks are prepaid support hours that let you call on Zentech's experienced technical staff to address all your support questions, problems, help you with workflows and standards, really anything you need on the technology side. We're here to provide the support you need so that your most talented people aren't being dragged into helping everybody else in your company instead of working on the billable jobs that you need them focused on. All right, so Zentech tech blocks are available in uh, multiple sizes. We sell them in five hour, 10 hour, 20 hour, and 40 hour prepaid support blocks. And if you're interested and you need that sort of help, Rocco, how do they reach out to us? Yeah, hit up our website, zentechconsultants.net. Give us a ring, 866-824-4459, or even drop us an email, sales at zentechconsultants.net. All right, Zentech Tech, Lock, Tech Blocks, the vital support that your people need exactly at the moment that they need it. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Cattle Call Podcast. We're, we're talking about working from home and, and, and basically how to not screw up a good thing. Um, and in this half of the show, I want to get into some of the, 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 the most important lessons that Rocco and I have learned, right, both, both personally and as managers, uh, you know, with regard to working from home. Um, and, and look, I know that a lot of our listeners have been doing this for a while now, but you know, the work processes and the output that companies have kind of been forced to tolerate during the pandemic because they the government made them are are disappearing right and, and look you're going to be back under you know bill lumberg's thumb real quick if you guys aren't careful and yeah that won't be great right so you know the the, the first thing that i want to point out is that what you need to do is put together a workspace right you need to have a consistent private quiet spot that is dedicated to work and nothing else, right? Um, you know, working on the couch, you know, in front of the tube, it, it, it is not going to fly moving forward. Uh, you look, I understand, I know everybody out there doesn't have a spare room that you get to use as an office, but even if you set up like, you know, a folding table, right, with your laptop and your monitor and your phone and everything and, and a decent chair, I, it, it's going to make a huge difference here. Um, you know, if you don't have, a formal work location, your brain doesn't feel like it's actually working and your output is going to reflect that, right? You look here, a, a half-assed workspace generates half-assed work. That's that's wisdom from Jim that you guys can all count on and feel free to reuse my quote there, right? That, that's how I feel about it. So, you know, Rocco, with, with, with our employees, right? Do, do you find that to be true? Do they all have dedicated workspace and do you think it, it has an impact on their performance and output yeah they do they, they do have a dedicated um area and, and in fact you know we we actually put it in our in our offer letters that they should have a dedicated quiet workspace i mean it, it, it <laughs> you know we're obviously in communication with customers all day long depending upon your 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 role and it's like you can't you, you can't be on a team's call in the middle of your kitchen when your two year old's running around, you know, it just doesn't, it doesn't work that well. So, but, and so, so we, we do require it and, and, and they do it. And, um, you know, and, and it, and it does, it does work. I mean, they're, they're, they're dedicated. It's their, it's their work spot, you know, it's our work spot as, as well, you know, 
Uh, so they do. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really important. And, and it, it ties into to my next point, Rich, which, which, you know, I'll, I'll sum up what I think is the most important thing that I've learned about working from home in one word uh, and the words attitude, um, you know, your personal attitude, it, it's going to have a really drastic impact on your productivity. Uh, you got a problem. <laughs> I got all kinds of problems. <laughs> I got attitude. <laughs> I'm from Jersey. Of course, I got attitude. That's what we do here. All right. Now, this guy. <laughs> All right. Um, but look, no, I, 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 I really do think, right, if, if you're at home and you're tired and you're bored and you're moping about and miserable, that absolutely shows in your performance. Right. And, and if you do that, you're going to get pulled really quickly back into the office and, and you're going to have a reason to be bored and moping and miserable. But you'll you know, just have to do it there. Um, you know, and, and it's really easy to get, you know, pulled into the doldrums when working from home, right? And, and, and humanity's own adherence to, to Newton's first law of motion, all right, can, can destroy the dream of working from home permanently. So, hey, Rocco, test, knowledge test. What's, what, what, what does Newton's first law of motion say? Duh. Duh. Yeah, nice job there. Ruining my whole bit. Uh, it's, it says very simply that, you know, bodies at rest tend to stay at rest and bodies in motion tend to stay in motion. Simplified, not a direct quote. But that's the idea, right? It, it, if you just sit and don't want to do anything at home, it gets worse <laughs> as you go. Um, and and I, I, I learned this the hard way almost 15 years ago um, when I first started working hybrid for an architectural firm because, you know, I had some long term family illness issues going on that I had to take care of at home. <clears throat> and, and I used to work from five in the morning until 10 in the morning in the office every day. Uh, and then I was, you know, could work the rest of the day from home. Um, and, and at first it went great, right? The first three months, not a problem at all. It was fantastic. Um, and after that, though, it, it started sliding. I, I started, you know, skipping days here and there when I, I wouldn't actually do any work when I got home. Uh, and then I started getting back you know, to doing that work, like, you know, later and later in the day, I'd come home and I'd watch TV for a few hours before I'd, I'd do something productive, um, you know, and, and my project delivery time started to slip, you know, and, and then I started blaming, oh, you know, all these, you know, oh, unfortunate events, you know, happened at home. That's why this didn't get done. It was kind of like a, a dog ate my homework kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, blaming that for, for why those things happen. Um, and like, hey, does that sound familiar to anybody who is listening right now? If it does, Think about it. Um, and, and honestly, I'll tell you that, you know, what what saved my butt from from either getting pulled back into the office or just flat out fired was a really solid boss of mine. Um, and he warned me that, you know, this this slacking had been noticed by by senior management um, and he had actually been tasked to track my productivity. Right. Because there were some comments and some complaints. Um, and, you know, luckily, the guy was a friend of mine and he was really sympathetic to my personal issues. And he gave me two weeks to square myself away before he started doing his, you know, formal tracking, right? And, and, and testing exactly what I was doing, how things were going, um, you know, and, and I had to lock myself back into a really strict work schedule and a really tight work environment at home, PDQ, right? And, and, and I did, and, and I never deviated from that routine again. Um, you know, and, and when his report went in, because he did have to do the report and everything, my numbers were actually the best in the entire company. And, and I made sure to keep them that way. So that topic never came up again. Um, you know, and then by the time that, that Rocco and I started working together a few, la few years later, um, I already had that remote, remote work process kind of down. Right. And I don't think it was ever an issue for us when we worked together. Um, so, you know, Rocco, kind of going back to what you were saying earlier, right? And, and I don't want to frighten our, frighten our employees who are listening or anything, uh, but we do keep an eye on their output, right? Um, you know, and, and what do you recommend that, that folks look for on the management end of things to make sure that their remote workers are doing what they should be doing? Yeah, I mean, for one, like I was saying before, you, you know, you, you you can be a manager without without hounding people, right? What are you doing right now? You know, kind of thing. You know, I, I, as a manager, look at, you know, look at the work. I mean, you know, use the technology that's at your fingertips to see are people being productive? Look at the work that they've accomplished, you know, and, and, and be fair with it, right? I mean, yeah, that, 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 this amount of work 
you know, could have been done in, in, in this um, this amount of hours? You know, are they being responsive responsive to customers' um, needs? Are they picking up the phone when you know when you call them? Um, you know, you use the technology that's that's there to to, to monitor. You know, uh, what what people are are, are doing. Um, so that's the that's the kind of thing that that could be done. And um, I mean, I think that's that's. I don't know that there's more to say beyond beyond that. Yeah, I mean, I think the only thing that I would add to that is 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 you do want to shift your mindset a little bit. I think there's a little leftover. You know, coming from the manufacturing background that this nation had, I think there's still a little mindset left in our culture that, you know, hey, you're being paid to work every minute of every hour like you were on an assembly line. And that's not the case, particularly when you get into, you know, design and construction and high end technology. You're being paid for production and output, you know, and, and I think you have to shift that. And it's OK if, if, you know, at the end of a day, your employees have done more work than they would have than you expected or, or, or what you could have reasonably expected in the office or, or the same. If they're at that level, do you really care if they did it in four and a half hours instead of the, the eight year? You know what I'm saying? Just, it's about the output to my mind and, and not the time. And that 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 I think is, is something that's in our American culture that I think we need to shift as managers. So, um, yeah, it is about the output. And I guess the other thing that I was thinking of is, um, you know, it's also, you know, from the management perspective, be a manager, you know, don't don't just decide to to check up on things, you know, once a week or 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 look look, you know, look at whether something was done a month after it should have been done. I mean, you know, <laughs> be yeah. responsible as a manager yourself, right? Um, to make sure that stuff is getting done. Don't don't be lazy yourself, you there know. You go. Yeah, part of this is on the manager too. Yeah, you've got to do your work as well. Yeah. That's a really good point. Um all right. So, so I guess, you know, kind of the, the, the question, right, is how do you keep your mindset in that work arena, right, when you're at home with a million comfortable distractions? Uh, well, I'll tell you how to make it happen, right? You, you, I treat it like any other work environment, but with a few extra steps to kind of keep my emotional and mental state semi-stable. <laughs> um, I'm never truly stable. I'm only semi-stable at best. Uh, you, know, you know, for starters, I have a set time that I work every day, just like I did when I was in an office, right? I log in, I check my emails, I start taking meetings, making Rocco miserable. I do that at the same time every single day, right? And, and that instantly, I think, starts your brain functioning in work mode. Um, you know, I like I said, I have a dedicated workspace that I do 100% of my work in. I never, ever work on the couch or in the recliner. Uh, you know, I'm also lucky enough to have an actual office in my house, right, where I can close the door for privacy and focus, which definitely helps. Um, I will say another important thing is no TV. I don't even have one in my office. Um, it's a tempting distra distraction, excuse me, that you you really need to avoid. Um, I, I, I turn on the radio if you want to stream, you know, music on iHeart or, or Spotify. You know, if you, if you want to listen to a great podcast, you know, like the cattle call, um, those are great tools to keep your mind from drifting or, 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 you know, help you keep, stop you from feeling like isolated or cut off from the world. But TV is the death of productivity. Uh, you know, turn off that boob tube and keep it off. Um, I, I, I also recommend, and this is a personal thing, right? I avoid earbuds and headphones, right? Um, unless you work in a loud, busy home and you really need them for work. Uh, you know, music is fine. Right, to listen to, but I think that plugging in takes you to more of a, a relaxation mindset, right? And it can make you miss calls, avoid, you know, you didn't notice emails and so on. You know, when you you get those earbuds in and you're jamming out to your favorite tunes, uh, you know, keep the music on, right? But through the speakers and at a low level, just like you would in an office environment. Um, and, and here's another thing, right? I've also found that an office chair completely changes my mindset. Um, I have tried folding chairs and dining room chairs and stools. And yeah, I've just found that I cannot fully focus unless I'm in an actual office chair. So it's a, maybe it's just, just a quirk of mine. I, and look, you know, my, mine's not some expensive executive chair or anything. It's, it's one that I picked up for like 150 bucks at Staples a couple of years ago. You know, it's comfortable, but it's not something that I want to sleep in. Uh, and I find that it makes a huge difference in keeping me working well. Um, I also try to end 
my workday at the same time every day. Uh, though, honestly, as a small business owner uh, and, and having Rocco behind me with his whip, uh, that, that doesn't really happen as often as they wish. Um, and Rocco's far worse at it, though. He's, he works till like 10, 11 and 90 is insane. Uh, but look, if you can do that, though, I think it can really help ward off a lot of the mental and emotional issues that can come up from sitting alone in an office all day. Right? Knowing that there's a fixed time that it's going to stop and that you can just walk down the hall and see your loved ones and have a little bit of fun. I think it makes it a lot easier. Um, so, so Rocco, what's your, what is your office set up like? And do you follow that same type of format that I do? Um, yeah, I know for a fact, like I said, that, that you, you absolutely work way too late every single night. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's just, it's, it's, the, it's the workload. I mean, you got to do what you got to do, but I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I, I have a separate office, you know, with, with a desk and, you know, and, and a desk with plenty of room now. And I find that even, even that makes a big difference, right? Don't have a cluttered desk. Don't have, you know, don't have your personal stuff all over and, and, and your work stuff. I mean, just have a, have a nice day. If you have the space and the ability you know, have have a nice dedicated desk that 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 you work at, um, and so so that's that's a that's a big thing. It it, it does make a difference, like you say. Yeah, it, it changes your mindset. Um, all right, so I'm going to point out two more things that I think are absolutely vital to long term remote work, and I know that some of you listening are are going to think I'm crazy. I right? and and just trust me on these, right? And then, look, Rocco's already started mocking me on these. Uh, but, but look, first, you, you need to dress the part, right? You need to shower, shave, and dress just like you would if you were going into the office. Right? And, and I mean every single day, not just when you have a Zoom call with the boss, right? Shorts, t-shirts, slippers, sweatpants, they're the worst things that you can put on. They completely change your, 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 your brain into a, a mindset of, of laziness and relaxation, right? Look, I... I if you're dressed for a day at the beach or like you'd like to curl up with a good book, that is what your brain is going to want and, and expect from you. Uh, and and yeah, I'm not saying you need to put on a suit or anything here, right? But a pair of jeans or khakis, some shoes and a sweater or a comfortable button up shirt, it's going to help your, you feel that it, it's work time, right? And it's going to increase your focus. Um, you know, I, that, that simple act of dressing like, like a responsible adult each day will help you behave like one, you know, at least for the work process, right? I don't make any promises about your regular behavior. Um, but, you know, I, I even fell back into that sweatpants rut during the pandemic. Um, and I actually had to force myself back out of it because I found that I was just dragging and tired and burnt out uh, from working just by lunch every day. Um, and, and, you know, the simple act of, you know, putting on big people clothes, I uh, completely change that. Right? When I'm dressed, I feel like a professional doing professional things, even if I'm only working 10 steps away from my bed. Um, and so, you know, Rocco, are, are, are you rocking the shorts and ripped t-shirts most day at home? Or, or do you find that dressing a little more formally helps you to focus? No, I, I'm not going to lie. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't, you know, I, I do I do work in, in sweats and a t-shirt or a sweatshirt or, you know, obviously depending upon the time of the year. Um, I don't, if we have meetings, you know, um, where your camera's on, obviously I dress nicer, but um, I, I don't dress professionally. And I, I, not that I think you're wrong, Jim. I mean, I, I, I agree with you. You know, it's just everybody's different. You know, I, I'm personally, I think I'm, I'm a lot more disciplined than a lot of people are. I mean, I, and you're going to get to this other point, but you know, I, I work out, you know, three mornings a week and, and, and I try to walk either during lunch or, or during the evening. Um, and I, I've done that since the beginning, since I first started, actually before um, I even started working from home, you know, I'd work out in the morning three days a week. And so I'm kind of, I'm pretty, pretty structured, pretty disciplined like that. I'm not, you know, like crazy army structure, but I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty disciplined, but um, I, I, I agree with you that, that dressing right, you, even at home makes, makes a difference. Yeah, no. And I said, everybody's different, right? And, you know, and, and you got to find what works best for you. Um, and look, I, I'll say you that the second point that I want to make here, that's vital to me. And this is a point that I call make your dang bed. 
it, it, it's not just making your bed every day, though. Though, though that is actually part of it. Um, you, you do want to do that. It's really about starting each day, right, by taking care of yourself. That's what Rocco was talking about, right? You know, you you, you got to prep yourself both mentally and physically for your at home work day. Um, a, a trap that I fell into early very early on and that I still stumble into now when things get busy and I'm, I'm overwhelmed is, is to ignore the basics of getting up and getting going in a healthy way. Uh, you know, trust me when I tell you that ignoring your own health will destroy your work quality and, and, and performance faster than anything else. So, you know, what do I mean by make your dang bed? Uh, you know, for starters, make your bed every day. Uh, it, it is really easy to let small things like that go all right, when we're working from home. And it actually nags at the back of your mind uh, that that's not done. It makes you feel lazy, like you're skipping things. And, and, and you kind of get in that set like, ah, it doesn't matter. And then other small things don't really matter either, right? And that, that will show in your work. And that's really the kind of the kiss of death for what we're talking about here. Every day. Right. We need to perform the basic, you know, ablutions that that make us part of the human race. Right. Bed making, teeth brushing, bathing, shaving, dressing, having breakfast, uh, all of the things that you would do if you were heading into an office. Um, and, and, and I'm also going to throw the, the one more thing out here, like Rago said, and, and I'll, I'll even say it takes a lot of chutzpah coming from someone with a, a gut the size of a small car dangling over his belt like I do. Um, but you also need to exercise every morning. Um, and, and this is one that I struggle with constantly, right? And I've, I've only really been able to get consistent with it over the last few months, honestly. Um, and, and, and I found that for me, at least, doing the exercise before work instead of after, it completely changes my entire mental state for the day. Um, even though it means I have to get up an hour earlier now, right? You know, I find that, you know, taking a good long walk and doing some stretching before work, it, it just makes me much more relaxed and content working from home than almost anything else. Um, you know, I tried for years to like Rocco does, right? He, you know, I'd go, you know, walk, work out at lunch or after work so that I didn't have to get up early because I hate getting up early. Uh, and honestly, it did nothing for my personal outlook. And, and I always faded out. I stopped doing it after a few weeks. Um, you know, it was, I, oh, I couldn't do it at lunch because I got tied up in a meeting or I was just too busy today. I didn't have time. And at the end of the day, honestly, just too tired. Uh, you know, work tires you out, right? Even from home. It's still work, right? Even from home. And, and, and for a fat man like me to, to go and work out after 12 hours of working, uh, it was not something that I was looking forward to. It was something I was dreading, right? And like I said, now, I get up, I go take a walk, I shower, I shave, I make the bed, I dress nicely every day before work, and my attitude and performance is dramatically better, right? Better attitude equals better work, right? Which means you're not getting pulled back into the land of, of red staplers and no birthday cake. Um, so, you know, Rocco, what else, what else do you do to keep the, the, the work at home process stable and productive? Um. Yeah, I think I've, we've, we've covered a lot of it, but I, I think it's important to take to take a break. I mean, you know, take take a break, go down the steps, breathe some fresh air. You know, um, you know, you're you're not, you know, don't don't take work so seriously that you can't even, you know, uh, take a bathroom break or or go get some water. Um, you know, so that, I think that's that's an important thing, and you know. Have a conversation with a coworker. You know, don't be afraid to pick up the phone and say, "Hey, how you know how are things going?" You know, uh, as if you were in in the office. You know, um, but you know, also be responsible, right? I mean, be a responsible adult. You know, realize that you do have a job, and don't you know, don't overstep. Like Jim is saying, don't overstep your the privilege that you have of being able to work from home. You know, if you're supposed to be working a certain hours be there you know don't it, it's one thing if there's an emergency and you know it, it, you that that happens to all of us but you know don't don't abuse your privileges because they're going to be taken away if you abuse them so um that's what comes to mind at the moment jim yeah, yeah and, and absolutely i agree with you 100 right i mean at the end of the day you being able to work from home 
it, it's going to be your responsibility, right? Your frame of mind, your attitude and emotional state are reflected in your work and in your correspondence and communication with your, your, your coworkers, right? And, and if you feel good, your work is going to show that. And if you feel crappy, you're going to generate crappy work. And, and, and look, you know, the Lumbergs of the world are just waiting for an excuse to pull you back into the office, right? Where they can hover in your cu cubicle door with their world's greatest boss coffee mugs and make sure you're getting those TPS reports done, All right? So don't let the Lumbergs win, folks. Fight the good fight by making your life better so they have no excuse to make it worse, All right? So with that, we're gonna get out of here and let you guys get back to making your dang bed. We're out of here, folks. We'll catch you next time on the Cattle Call Podcast. All right, everybody. Today's Cattle Call was brought to you courtesy of Zentech Consultants. That's Rocco and I. Uh, Zentech Consultants works with design and manufacturing firms to help our clients purchase and implement the software that they need in these complex industries. Uh, we provide a single point of contact for clients to buy, develop, and learn the most vital software systems for your specific needs. Uh, Zentech strives to be your trusted technology partner from your initial needs all the way through long-term support and training for your entire staff. So Rocco, why don't you tell them how to reach out to Zentech? All right, yeah, you can reach out to us through zentechconsultants.net. You can email us at sales at zentechconsultants.net or you can even call us 866-824-4459. Excellent, we look forward to hearing from y'all.